What's up, everybody? I'm Dinebot, and welcome back to Favorite Places to Fly World Tour 2022. We are here for day seven in North America, and we have gone back up north again. We are going to be taking off from the Sydney Airport on Cape Breton Island. You can see that we are up in the north. Now, I have chosen runway 24. We're going to be taking a North American Aviation T6 Texan for this. I'm going to be heading to the west, southwest for this flight. However, there's a whole lot for you to see on this island off the coast of Nova Scotia. So let's get flying and have a little bit of a discussion and we'll talk about Cape Breton Island. Now, you're going to find multiple names for this. There is actually a Scottish Gaelic name. Yes, the Scots were involved in the history of this island. There's a lot of Seven Years' War, American Revolution, colonial stuff that goes into that. As usual, I am not going to touch on the colonial stuff because the past was the worst and I hate talking about colonial crap. So uh, we're going to keep this more broadly focused on the island's geography and how it is today. All right, here we are. And keep in mind, I am flying a relatively old aircraft here. In fact, to aid our takeoff, I'm actually going to go outside the cockpit because... Uh, Tail draggers are a little difficult to take off sometimes. There we go. Attracting our gear. Now they're up. Let's just take our turn. Now, you'll see a lot of forest stretching up before us. There are several different climates and ecologies that you can find on this island. Up, you would have seen Inverness on the map. That's going to be up in the highlands. That is actually extension of the Appalachian Mountain chain. So, you're going to get tableland up there. You also have a coastal section, which, while it's not at a high elevation, it's got a cool climate, a lot of raw, a lot of rock. A lot of rain, a lot of fog, strong winds, low temperature for uh, summer temperatures. You also have the hills. That's going to be what they call Acadian forest. Most of you will be familiar with this is of this kind of forest. It's what you kind of expect to see in mountains. God, that's a beautiful plain. Now, a little bit of just general knowledge about this island. It is about a 3,900 square mile island. So it is pretty big. It is separated from the actual mainland. There is, however, a causeway. The Canso Causeway, it's rock field, connects it to mainland Nova Scotia. So you can actually get here uh, via automobile if you want to. Not a huge population, 132,000, although that accounts for about 18% of Nova Scotia's population. So uh, Nova Scotia, not the most populated place in the world. Now, there are also lowlands, and that would be kind of what you're seeing us fly over some now. A uh, lot along the western shore around Lake Ainsley. A Scottish word I'm not going to attempt to pronounce. Just, just not going to do it, but you can see the town stretching out below us here. I'm going to hop us back in the cockpit real quick. And here is the VFR map. Now, one thing I will do today, guys, that I don't normally do is I am going to do a little jump for us, and I'm going to get us over the tablelands over on the western coast of around Inverness, and we're going to have a look there. So, through the magic of editing, I will take you guys right there, and you don't have to do the whole flight with me. Aren't you guys lucky? And here we are, guys. We have made it over to the western coast through the magic of editing. You'll see that the landscape is... A fair bit different looking below us. I'm gonna cut our throttle here and lose some altitude. Now, one thing I will note also as we are coming down is you do have the other island sections here down to your south. But this is kind of what I want to show. There is some good diversity in terms of the island itself. We've gone from mostly lowlands to some rolling tablelands. I'm going to bank us out here and come on down. 
So yeah, there is a lot of interesting stuff to actually see if you want to fly around and experience the diverse biomes here and really, really check it out. You'll note that there is not a lot below us in terms of civilization, just a few winding roads, so not a very populated island, as I said before, when we were talking about the actual population density, but really fun place to fly. <clears throat> Uh, place that you would also probably expect to see a lot of fog and other things at certain times. We can probably simulate that real fast before we wrap up for the day. Let's see here. Mm, we could do some scattered clouds. Let's see what we get. There we go. God, the clouds in the sim never cease to amaze me. See, that's kind of what you would be looking at probably on a lot of days. So guys, if you have any comments, or if you found the video useful, helpful, maybe it's a place you're going to fly, hey, like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. And if you're here to the end, watch Time is Key on YouTube. My name is Dinebot, and I will see you guys next time for Day 8 in North America.